Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. The mean of five consecutive integers is 15. What are the numbers? What are these five consecutive integers? All right, now this is obviously a pretty short problem, but the solution uh, does require a bit of work. And if you could figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course I will solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, now let's go ahead and take a, a look at this problem one more time before I show you the answer. The mean of five consecutive integers is 15. What are the numbers? Now, obviously you need to understand what this word means, which is quote unquote mean. And you need to understand what a consecutive integer is because if you don't know what the mean is or a consecutive integer is, you're going to be lost. But this is not that difficult. But I didn't want to tell you that because I wanted to give you a full opportunity to solve this problem all on your own. But let's go ahead and take a look at what the answer is. Of course, we're looking for five consecutive integers. And if you did this right, uh, you would have come up with these numbers right here. 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. All right, now how did you do? Well, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you an A++, a 200% multiple stars. Matter of fact, if you were in my algebra class, I would just say, you know what? You are dismissed. Have a great rest of the year. I'll see you next year. I have no idea how you got so smart in math. Maybe you're watching that guy on YouTube. Now, if you notice, I said the word algebra, right? If you were in my algebra course, because we need algebra in order to solve this problem. And if you figure this problem out, uh, you know, without using algebra, that is fantastic. But algebra is such a great tool. And I never like to say, hey, we're going to do an algebra word problem uh, because most people will be like, what are you talking about? I don't want to do an algebra uh, word problem. I don't even like algebra. Uh, I just say solve the math problem uh, because you never want to sell yourself short to figuring a problem out. Okay, there's all different sorts of ways and creative techniques you could use. But uh, again, I don't want you to be afraid of algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution here. And again, if you don't know what the mean stands for or, or what the mean is or consecutive integer is, well, these are very important concepts in mathematics. And uh, before we get into that, we need to consider that we are dealing with a uh, math word problem and we want to use the rule of three. In other words, read the problem three times, make sure you understand it. Now this uh, problem is pretty uh, short. And the main thing here is that we need to understand these terms. So what is the mean? Let's start with that word. So what is the mean? Well, this is just a fancy word for average. Okay, so the mean is the same thing as the average. Now, how do you calculate the average? Well, if you have uh, these numbers, let's say two, three, and four, to calculate the average, you simply add up all the numbers you have and divide by those amount of numbers, right? So here, we have two plus three plus four, and because we have three numbers, one, two, three, we're gonna divide by three. So this is gonna be what? Well, this would be two and three is five. Five plus uh, four is nine, right? So we have nine over three, and nine divided by three is three. And you can kind of see that the average is three. Well, it looks like it makes sense because it's right in between two and four, but the mean is nothing more than the average. Now that is not to be confused with other other terms in basic uh, basic statistics. Uh, uh, primarily uh, the median. Uh, so many people confuse the median and the mean. Uh, remember, just the mean is the average. The median is a whole different deal, and you definitely need to understand this. And I'll give you some suggestions on how you can learn all of this. But uh, again. With this particular problem, we just need to understand the average. Okay, so now the next component of this problem is what is a consecutive integer? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Now, first of all, we need to um, remember what an integer is. Now, the integer 
are integers is a um, uh, they are a subset of the real number system. So you can see I have some examples here, but when you study numbers, we study the real number systems first, and then when you get into more advanced algebra, you get into other number systems like the complex number system. So here you start with zero. Well, actually, you start with these numbers here: one, two, three. Uh, before zero even was even around. Now imagine here is your lovely hand, right? This is a terrible hand, but let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So uh, the word digit, right? Like, hey, what's the digit? Uh, how many digits? There's four digits, da, da, da. Well, these are your digits of your hand. So, you know, way back in the good old days, people would identify, hey, I see two bears, I see, or say, I, we, I see one bear, or two deer, or three uh, panthers, whatever the case is, these are called the counting numbers or naturally occurring numbers. Then we throw zero into this, and these are the whole numbers. Uh, so if we have the whole numbers and the positive and negative whole numbers, we have the set of integers, and there's other sets of numbers that you need to know on the real number system, like rational numbers, irrational numbers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, anyways, I don't want to digress too much. I just can't help myself when we're talking about math. I want to make sure you fully understand these concepts. All right, so these are integers, and this problem is talking about consecutive integers. So what does the word consecutive mean? Well, it means uh, they are in a, uh, they're coming um, uh, numbers that are one right after the other. So for example, one, two, and three are consecutive integers because we have one, and then we have the next integer in line, and then the next integer like that. So what would not be consecutive integers would be like negative three, zero, and five, okay? These are not one right after the other. These right here are consecutive and they are integers. So these are the type of numbers that we are looking for. All right, so now hopefully you're saying, okay, Mr. D2 Math Man, I get it. I now know what a consecutive integer is. I know what the mean uh, means, it's the average. So now what we need to do is use some algebra to figure this out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the variable x represent our first integer, okay? Now, if I have x, and now I want the next integer, and then the next integer, and I have five integers, what would be my next integer after x? Well, I'm just going to add 1. Okay, so if we go back to our integers here, like 1, 2, 3, these are separated by 1. 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, etc. So if x is our first integer, x plus 1 would be our second integer. Now, if I have x plus 1, and now I add another 1 to the x plus 1, I have my third integer. Now, this is x plus 1 plus 1, or x plus 2. Now, if I have x plus 2 plus 1, I have x plus 3. That's my fourth integer. If I add 1 to this, I got x plus 4. That's my fifth integer. Okay, so make sure you understand what's going on here. And if you do, you're like, all right, I think I know where this guy is going. What we're going to want to do is get back to the prom because what does the prom state? Well, it says that the mean or the average of these five consecutive integers, and now we have models for these, right? Algebraic or variable expressions that represent these five consecutive integers. Uh, and the answer says the mean of these five consecutive ent integers, excuse me, is 15. All right, is 15. So we can build an equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all our lovely integers here, right? So we have five of them, one, two, three, four, five. And the average, so we have one, two, three, four, five. We have to remember we are talking about the mean or the average is equal to 15. All right, so let's go ahead and put this all together. So here is our five consecutive integers. So if we wanted to find the average, we would do what? We would add these up. And then we would divide by what? One, two, three, four, five, right? And we know the answer is 15. So we're gonna build ourselves a lovely equation that looks like this. Okay, so x plus x plus one plus x plus two plus x plus three plus x plus four. There's five, we're gonna divide by five. We know that the mean or the average is 15. So now it really comes down to your ability to solve this lovely equation. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely need your help. You see, I'm not shy to ask for help, and neither should you. If you're struggling in math, if you're like, uh, you know, you don't want to be this person, you'll be like, I don't get it. It's so hard. It's so difficult. Well, you got to do something about your uh, not understanding something, okay? 
So raise your hand, talk to your teacher. You know, hopefully my videos are helping you out. And if you want to really learn from me, like a full course of instruction, check out all my main courses. You'll see uh, the links to those courses in the description, but you know, they go far. Um, my full course instruction videos are much different than my YouTube videos. I break things down, formal instruction. I have school students that use my instruction uh, successfully for many years. So if you don't have a great teacher, I would love to be your teacher. But if you enjoy these videos and you're getting something out of it, well, help me out. Just hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go ahead, go ahead and focus now on how, how excuse me, to solve this big old equation right here. Well, first things first, first we need to simplify this numerator. It looks pretty scary here, but we have a lot of like terms. We have a bunch of X's and a bunch of numbers. So how many X's do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. So that is, you know, five X's, right? So X plus X plus X plus X is five X. And then of course we have one, two, three, and four. That's gonna add up to 10, that's three. And uh, we got a three and three, that's six. And then six and four is 10. So we have five uh, X plus 10 over five is equal to 15. Okay, so that is the equation right now. It's much simpler than what it looks like, right? So, you know, never be overly intimidated by something. And now what can we do here? Well, this is a great opportunity for us to use our factoring skills and factor out the GCF or the greatest common factor, right? So I can take a five out here. So I can write this as five times X plus two. Now, uh, by doing so, I'll be able to cross cancel these fives right here. So it's just going to make my life so much easier. Now, if you didn't go that route, you could have said, all right, well, this is 15 or 15 over one. You could have thought of this as a proportion and maybe cross multiplied. That's not a bad route as well, but always look for opportunities to factor when you can. All right, so we're going to factor out the GCF, which we did, which is five. Now we're going to cross cancel uh, this five with this five. Remember, these are factors. This is being separated by multiplication. And now look right here, I have this lovely equation, X plus two is equal to 15. So uh, to solve for X, all I have to do is subtract two from both sides of the equation. I got X is equal to 13. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we have to go back to our setup and our setup was what? Well, our setup was the following, right? Let me go back over here and I'm going to show you another way to solve this equation. So here is our setup. We know that our first integer, x is equal to 13, is gonna be obviously our first um, consecutive integer. But let me go back over here real quick and show you another approach you could have taken to solve this equation, being that I brought it up. So you could have uh, decided, well, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and just think of this as two equal fractions or a proportion. So be like, all right, five times uh, 15 is 75. One times five X plus 10 is five X plus 10. Now I can go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides of the equation. I got five X is equal to 65. Then I'll divide both sides of the equation by five and I get X is equal to 13. So that is perfectly fine as well, okay? So remember in algebra, you know, um, there's just not one way to solve you know, a problem. Now, typically there's going to be the best way, right? The most efficient way. And the only way you discover that is through practice, practice, practice. But the bottom line is that we know that X is equal to 13. And now we could put this all together. So what is our five consecutive integers? Well, our first integer is 13, all right? And if we're talking about consecutive integers, uh, they're gonna be separated by one, right? So X plus one, so 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 is going to be the answer. Now, of course, we could go ahead and find the average, but we can see that the average here, or this middle number, which is also the median, is going to be 15. All right, so hopefully this was a pretty easy problem. Uh, don't ever look, don't ever let, you know, uh, a problem intimidate you, okay? Now, of course, I know, even myself, there is very advanced math problems that I would be, you know, you know, intimidated by. So, you know, it's just uh, natural, you know, to, or human to be like, it's kind of, you know, first impressions, be like, oh, this is very difficult, or I don't understand what's going on. But the way to approach a situation that it seems complicated, whether it's an equation or a problem, is just to break it down in its component parts. And in this particular problem, if you didn't understand what these terms mean, well, you got to go, you know, answer those questions first and then go back and revisit the problem. Now, if you need help with uh, word problems or algebra, 
First of all, I have a ton of uh, word problems on my YouTube channel. Uh, so a lot of them, a lot of them involve algebra. Others of them um, involve trigonometry or geometry. But um, here's the thing: before you do word problems, you got to get the skills down, right? So the algebra skills. So if you want to learn algebra, again, check out my main courses: my pre-algebra, algebra one, or algebra two courses. You'll find links to those in the description. If you are not a math student, but you want to maybe kind of rebuild your math skills, well, check out my math skills rebuilder course. Here I teach you basic math, then I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some basic probability and statistics. Says uh, statistics because I think of everyone that possibly could, uh, you know, watch my videos. And a lot of people watch my videos are not uh, math students; they're just people that like to learn math. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.